Jesus Christ. You know, people always asking us how we gonna open up the church. And I always tell the people, I wish I was a multi-millionaire because what we are preaching is in strong demand everywhere, every city, every state, every country where the truth of God travels to, God give us victory all the time. I am persuaded that there are sincere people all over. Everybody don't want to be lost. Everybody don't want to go to hell. There are some people that really mean to go back with God. Then on the other hand, you have those that talk a good game. But when you're really making up in your mind to do this right, nobody served God without paying the price. And you're going to have to give up something. And please don't be surprised what that thing may be. It may be the closest thing to you. Maybe someone that you knew all your life. Maybe that job that you have that's giving you a million dollars a year, especially when the income that you're making contradicts what's written. But if you do it like God requires, God will be pleased with you. To all of our viewers, again, we are here in Little Rock, Arkansas. It's a very wicked city. <laughs> Just as wicked as any other city. I haven't been in no city where all are righteous. I haven't been in no city where all are holy. Some say, he come here and talk about our city like that? Why, yes. Sure, Little Rock is a wicked, ungodly, devil-deceived city within a wicked, ungodly country. And that got all America, it doesn't matter what political party you're affiliated with. All right, let's dive into the Bible. Let me update the saints. We got a report, uh, more baptisms here. They contact me from uh, overseas also. And Ghana, 24 was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe it was yesterday. Two went down in Scotland, two went down in Johannesburg, South Africa. As I mentioned, 26 last night here in Arkansas, one in Fredericksburg, Virginia, one in North Chicago, one in Grand Rapids, Michigan. So that's 57 so far that was baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now to all of you that are here and to our viewers, God only have one church. As I often say, one church established by one God. And God advises everybody to come out of what they're in. In fact, I want the book of Kings and I want the book of Corinthians. Yes. I'm criticized for telling people to stay home and don't go to church. And I'm also criticized for telling people Leave your churches. <laughs> Let's get Bible for both. I don't care if you call yourself an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, an elder, if you're Gabriel's cousin, <laughs> if it was possible. If you're not going to do it like the word of God said, this is a warning. That's right. Holiness is the last day's warning. For the correction of man, you know, in the days of Noah, Noah preached a message that was unusual to them that heard it. They wasn't used to rain, but uh, it didn't stop him from telling the people what God says. It was going to rain. Their hardheadedness, their stubbornness, their rebelliousness did not stop God's word from coming to pass. It rained just like God said it did. And if there was any preachers that was unrighteous in Noah's day, they drowned just like everybody else. So the world is having a big time, a big religious party. And the devil has set up so many religions until many people say, well, Pastor Jennings, I don't know what's right. I tell them God is right. 
And if you follow what God say, it'll get you right and keep you right. Give me the book of Kings first. First Kings chapter 22, we'll start reading in verse 16. I want to show you why I tell everybody, go home. That's right. Go home. Stop wasting your time and your energy. Going to your churches out of routine every Saturday, every Sunday, just burning up gas and wearing out shoe leather. For what? To be lost. Let us remember that the breath that is in our nostrils is equal to someone that leases a house. When your lease is up, you got to get gone. When uh, God called your spirit in and your body now is vacant of breath, time for you to go out of here, pushed out of time into eternity. Holiness is designed to take you out of everything that will keep you out of the kingdom of God and then connect you with God that you may be one with him. And when you are one with him, you know what that's going to bring? That's going to cause ties to be severed. Glory to take God with many others. I came up in false church. Yes, I did. I came up in so-called apostolic church. And uh, they believe in a baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. They believe in the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. They believe it was one God. Didn't believe in no women preachers. In other words, they had the meat, the vegetables, and <laughs> the carbs, and whatnot. But there were some other missing things yeah. that caused the meal not to be balanced. You know, when you truly want to eat right, you want a balanced meal. If you want to get into the kingdom of God, you want a balanced message. Right. A message that give all the elements of your being correction, yeah. modification, cause you to make adjustments and readjustments. But religion today, oh my Lord. You know, if God haven't saved me, now, if I wasn't saved now and looked at religion and didn't know the truth, I wouldn't want to be saved. I say if I didn't know the truth. Right. Because religion don't have nothing to offer me but hell. That's right. Now, you know that's backward. <laughs> religion's supposed to be able to offer you God, God's word. Salvation, protection, deliverance. I should not be on my way to hell because I'm religious. That's right. Religion's supposed to come rescue me from the evil. Thank God that the devil have. But the devil have used religion to damn thousands. Oh, yes. How does he do it? By misusing. The name of Jesus Christ. That's right. Notice the book of Kings here. First Kings 22, we'll start at verse 16. I want to take my time and soak you. Mm -hmm. You can shout next year. <laughs> Amen. You only got a few more weeks before next year come. You can hold your feet till then. That's right. All right, come on, Williams, give chapter and verse. First Kings chapter 22, we'll start at verse 16. Follow me. And the king said unto him, How many times shall I adjure thee? There was a king by the name of Ahab. There was a prophet by the name of Micaiah, okay. the son of Embla. Where the Lord came to Micaiah to debunk the lust of Ahab who wanted to take over the territory called Ramoth Gilead. That's right. And there was another king by the name of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat came there with Ahab and mm -hmm. Ahab got about 400 false prophets to uh, make it look exciting as if the Lord was saying something, hoping that would move Jehoshaphat. Mm -hmm. And Ahab said to the false prophets, should I take Ramoth Gilead or should I forbear or should I leave it alone? And they said, go up. Ha, listen at this. In 1 Kings 22 and at verse 6. And all the liars said to Ahab, go, go up, up, go up, go up. 
For the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. They lied. That's right. The Lord ain't said nothing. <laughs> and that's what's going on now. You know, when you're not scripturally inclined, I, I want you to get what I'm telling you. When you are scripturally and spiritually illiterate. That's it. Did you hear what I said? That's right. <clears throat> scripturally, spiritually illiterate. That's right. Don't have the understanding of what the word of God says. Any old fool, false prophet. When I was a kid, I used to watch a cartoon. Two crows called Heckle and Jekyll. <laughs> That's what you have in the, pul in the pulpits of America and the world. That's right. Heckles and Jekylls. That's right. And Heckle and Jekyll, I remember the two crows, they were scoundrels. <laughs> Always got something cooking. Amen. Always got something going on. To deceive and the trick. That's exactly the way preachers are today. That's right. When you are scripturally illiterate, uneducated on the things of God, any old heckle and jekyll can come and say, The Lord said this, and the Lord said that. <clears throat> what makes people gravitate to it? Because when they hear the lie, they don't know it's a lie. But when they hear what the preacher said, thus saith the Lord, it sounds so good to them, they wish it was true. That's right. And if you notice, the Lord, according to the mouths of these liars, always said, mm -hmm. you're going to get rich. That's right. It's all over Africa, all over America, all over Canada, all over Europe, all over South America. Out of every ethnic group, there's a false prophet that's preaching wealth. That's right. One false prophet in, uh, here in America said when you hear a man preach against wealth, it's because he don't have none. Oh, really? Oh, really? Really? In the book of St. Matthew 26 and verse 11. Let's see what Jesus preached. For ye have the poor always with you. Yes. But me ye have not always. Yes. For in that she hath poured this ointment You know, my Jesus body. preached to the apostles, strive not to be rich. So you mean to tell me if someone preach against it, that mean uh, they don't have no money? No. God can make a man rich. But when God make a man rich because his heart is so sanctified, he's still going to preach it in keeping with God's word. Labor not to be rich. Listen at this in the prophets. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 4. Look at Brother Solomon. Here's a rich man preaching it. That's right. A rich man preaching it. Yeah, man. That's right. A rich man. These old false prophets said, if a man preaches against riches, it's because he's not. That's a lie. Amen. Solomon was rich and didn't ask for it. That's right. God made him rich. That's right. I mean with land and houses and wealth. Well, but he still died a fool. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse oh, 4. Oh, I said Solomon died a fool? Yes. Yes, he did. Thank God the strange women took his heart away from God. That's right. Thank God in everything he tore down, they made him build it back up. That's right. And the scripture says if you build up again the things you destroy, you make yourself a transgressor. Amen. Listen at this now. Proverbs 23 and verse 4. What the Holy Ghost said. Labor not to be rich. Don't work to be rich. Cease from thine own wisdom. Cease. From your own ideology. Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? Would you set your eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves riches wings. Riches make themselves wings. They fly away. They, they get away from you. As an eagle toward heaven. No one said, I've never seen riches fly. They fly every second of the day. That's right. They fly away from you. The moment that rich man die, his riches is gone. That's right. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Amen. All right, let's go back to the book of Kings now. Back in 1 Kings 22 and we're at verse 6. Listen. Shall I go against Ramoth? Shall I go against shall Ramoth Gilead? I go against Ramoth Gilead or shall I leave it alone? And they said, go up. And that's what the preachers are telling them. Yeah. The Lord says, go up. The Lord will give it to you. And Jehoshaphat said, is there not a prophet oh, of the Lord besides? Oh, it's good to have someone in the group. <laughs> that's right. That know the sound of God. That's right. Eh? Amen. Jehoshaphat knew God's Sound. That's right. And he knew what Ahab was throwing down. That didn't sound right. Amen. That didn't sound like something God would say. Is there viewers, nothing? viewers, and held 
bound watches. Mm. You mean to tell me all this religious trash that is circulating around the world? You're not scripturally educated to be able to decipher, yeah. to differentiate mm. the sound of God from the sound of the devil? That's right. The sound of God is wrapped 100% in scripture. That's right. I don't care nothing about how loud a man scream and shake the microphone and walk across the chairs until he trip up and fell. <laughs> that don't mean nothing. No. He can yell like James Brown and moonwalk like dead Jackson. <laughs> That's right. That don't mean nothing. No. Come on back to Bible. Amen. This is why we labor to teach you what's written. You know, if you learn what's written, that fortify you against every false prophet under the sun. That's right. Eh? It fortifies you. That's when God starts opening up my understanding that I might understand the scripture to what was written. I, I noticed it became, I became fortified. That's right. And then when I would knock on the door of my fake bishop <laughs> and ask him questions out the Bible. This is after he preached a lie. You see, I'll wait till he preached a lie first. Amen. I, I was reading for the preacher in the church I came out of. They didn't have no reader. He would give out about 30 or 40 scriptures and have the whole congregation reading for them. That's right. And I went to him and said, well, why don't you let me read? You ain't got to give out no scripture. I said, I, I pick up the scripture without you even calling for it. So uh, as a young boy, I was reading for the preacher. Williams, he was still out there with three gods. <laughs> Amen. And, and the wilderness of confusion and, and the orbit of confusion out there with three gods not knowing uh, whence he comes. But uh, I was reading for the preacher and every time he would preach a lie, I would read the truth. Mm -hmm. And then he would preach a lie, I'd come back and read the truth. Mm -hmm. He would preach a lie and come back and read the truth and it frustrated him so bad, he said, hey, don't you read nothing else for me. That's right. Don't read nothing else for me no more. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, it's good to have the Bible, but holiness challenges your belief that you claim to have in the Bible. That's right. I don't care how much you carry the Bible. I don't care how holy and sanctified you claim you are. Holiness challenge your so-called scriptural belief. belief. Now, in the days of Micaiah, and when Ahab lied, the prophets lied and said, the Lord said, go up and prophesy. Mm -hmm. Micaiah challenged it. That's right. And God dealt with Micaiah. Then the word of the Lord came to Micaiah and said, I saw all Israel. Scattered upon the hills. Listen at this. First Kings 22 and verse 17. I saw all Israel. All Israel. Scattered upon the hills. Scattered, thank God. God on the hill. As sheep, As sheep that have not a shepherd. That's the problem. That's it. The people now, they're scattered everywhere. Scattered. Why? As sheep that have not a shepherd. Followers that don't have no preacher. And the Lord says. What did the Lord tell the people like that? These have no master. They don't have no teacher. They don't have no ruler. As a result, what should they do, Williams? Let them return every man to his house in peace. Go home. That's right. That's right. You see, it's written there. Let them return it every man. It didn't say return to your church. No, no. Go home. Let them return every man to his Tell house in peace. your hard head, stubborn things out there. Amen. Go home. Go home. Amen. Many of you watching now, you got one pants leg, one leg in your pants, about to pull up the other to go to church. Don't do that. That's right. Take your suspenders off and take off your belt and hang it back up. Put your jammies back on. Let them return every man to go his home. house in peace. Amen. Stay away from the churches that teach you there's three distinct persons in the Godhead. That's right. Stay away from the churches that teach you there are two gods in heaven. Amen. Stay away, glory to God, from the churches that teach you flesh and blood is in heaven. That's right. When the Bible speaks plain that flesh and blood cannot, cannot inherit the kingdom of God. 
stay away from the church that got women apostles, women pastors, women bishops, women deacons, women elders. Let them return. Stay away from the church where they got that fake blessing plan. And the bless the plan is get your money. That's right. The blessing is that fake reverend got your money. Let them return. Stay away from that homosexual choir. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Let them return. Stay away from the churches that got their rainbow flag. Amen. Stay away from oh, the hey. gay preacher running a revival in your church. Let them return oh, every oh, man oh, to his house in peace. The Holy Ghost said. Let them return every man. Go back. To his house in peace. Go back home. That's right. Go right. back home. Let them return. Make a detour. You know the Holy Ghost and set a detour sign up. Amen. Yeah. Amen. All right, now give me the book of Corinthians. Now I got the prophets. Let's get the apostles. Now in 2 Amen. Corinthians. Amen, because Jesus gave the apostles a perfect understanding. He died and come back the third day, then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures, and that's what's wrong with me. <laughs> that's right. Yeah? That's right. That's, what's, that's what got my mind all messed up the way it is. That's right. Amen. God done through holiness, and that thing done hit my mind and knock out all the religious folly. Folly. Thank God that he done inserted something that's pure. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Pure sanctified and holy. That's right. And that's wrapped around with scripture. That's why I, I, I don't believe in preaching nothing else. <laughs> I had one preacher said, I agree with what you preach, but the thing I don't agree with, you don't believe in searching Hebrew, Greek, and Latin to get an understanding. I say, I don't search Hebrew, Greek, or Latin to get understanding. No. I search the scriptures. Search the scriptures. Yeah. That's right. And the reason why I don't need Hebrew to get an understanding because there was a man who was born a Hebrew. That's right. Amen. He come on out the tribe of Benjamin, come out of the descendants of Abraham. Thank God. He was born, born a Hebrew, Hebrew from birth. That's right. But when God spoke from heaven, you know what the Hebrew said? But who art thou, Lord? That's right. So being a Hebrew didn't help him. No. I being a going to Hebrew, I don't need that to understand the Bible. No. All I need is the revelation and the understanding of the eternal God. Search the scriptures. Eh, hallelujah. Eh? Search, Search the scriptures. The Bible. For in them. No, for in Hebrew. In them. In Greek. Search the scriptures. That's the problem with you blind, devil deceived preachers. You don't search. Hebrew, Greek, and Latin, and theology, and all this other stuff. Yeah. And as a result of stuff, I remember when I was debating the Church of God in Christ with Minister Smith. That's what he kept re repeating Hebrew. Hakai this, and Hakai that, like you do doing martial arts. Hakai! That's right. Yeah? That's right. And, I, and as a result of his Hebrew search, what did he come up with? Three persons in the Godhead. That's right. Uh, that's, that's what searching Hebrew does. Amen. But yet the Hebrews was told in the Bible, Hail Israel. Yeah. The Lord our God is one. That's right. That's what the Hebrews was told. That's right. Are you getting what I'm saying? Search telling? the scriptures. Search the scriptures. Search what's written here. For in them, in them, you think you have eternal life. You think you have eternal life. You think you have it, for they are they which, which testify, testify of me. me. What did the Apostle Paul tell them in Corinth now? Now in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 17. All right, you that's going to your false church after the word tell you go home. That's right. You're being hard headed. Yes. And now I'm being that you still going to your false church, I want to reinforce it. Second you Corinthians. won't go home like the Bible said. That's right. So I want to reinforce it. That's Second right. Second Corinthians. Chapter son. 6 and verse 17. Chapter 6, begin at verse 17. Wherefore, come out what from agreement. among them. First, let's get what agreement. At verse 16. Let's back up. Let's see what it says at verse 15. At yeah. verse 15. All right, son. And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Verse, uh, verse 14. 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Wait a minute. Amen. Amen. Don't be unequally yoked, yoked together, together with unbelievers. Be ye How not. is it you a believer of Scripture? Yeah. And so close with them that don't believe the Scripture. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. I don't care if it's mother, son, daughter, brother, brother. husband, wife. When the word of God come in, 
Oh, it's going to be some friction. Yes, it will be. Huh? That's right. I believe the scripture talk about he's going to set it very. Think not that I am come to send peace on Look earth. Look at what Jesus said. In the book of St. Matthew, chapter 10 and verse 34. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. Jesus said, don't you think this way. I came not to send I peace, but a sword. peace but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance. Glory to God. I, I, I come to set a man opposite. Against his father. Uh, wait a minute. What? For I am come to set a that, man at variance. That's what holiness does. That's right. That's what, that's what folks write me. This man talk about my father and all that. That's right. That's right. I let you know your daddy's of the devil. Your granddaddy's of the devil. Your grandma, your great great grandma. That's right. Your mama, I tell you about your own mama. <laughs> Amen. Right. Talk about your wife and your that's husband. Right. That's right. Your children. Why do I do it? Amen. Because the Holy Ghost spoke in here. I am come to set a man of variance against it his ain't father. Nobody family, including mine. That's right. Above what's written here. That's right. When God sent a man. He don't send him to run hand in hand with the world. No, Thank no. God he sent him against the world. That's right. Against the governments of the world. That's right. Democrats, Republicans, and liberals, and everybody. That's right. Hey, Amen. This is what God does to him. Think not that I am come to send peace Think on earth. Think not. Amen. Thank that let you know these men out here, God didn't send them. They are peace preachers. That's right. Huh? That's right. They don't want to offend nobody. Nobody. That's why they all get up and talk about loving. <laughs> Love and love. Yeah, I believe God is love. God also hates. That's right. So I said, I don't want a God that hate. Well, you got him, buddy. You got him. He said, Jacob I love and Esau I hate. That's right. He does both. Both. All right, what did he say? Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I didn't come to send peace. I came not to send peace but a sword. What is it? For I am come to set a God man at variance against his father. I man at Variance. Against his father. You know, when you stand for holiness, they're going, you're going to end up being against the way your father lived. That's right. If your father still want to drink and gamble and smoke and lie and all of a sudden want to bring his second wife in the house after you come into the knowledge of the truth, That's right. now you're at odds with him. That's right. Well, son, I read you. Don't disrespect me, Pop. I'm not disrespecting you, but I'm, I am I got a new life now. That's right. Huh? That's right. Hey, Amen. I got a new life now. You may be my earthly father, but I got to obey the heavenly father, uh, which is above my earthly father. For I am come to set a man at variance. It doesn't matter if your father is your bishop, your father is your pastor. Amen. If you believe what the word of God said, then brother, you're going to be at variance. If your Father, still one of the whole women preachers. You got to take what the word of God say and throw it in your father's face. That's right. If father said, I'm your father, but the heavenly father said. For I am come to set a man at variance Hallelujah. against his father. Yeah. Amen. I am come to set a man at variance against his if father. You're scared to go up against Hallelujah. your father. Scared to go up against your brother. Scared to go up against your wife. Scared to go up against your cousin. Scared to go up against the governments of the world. That's right. You're not of God. That's right. Yeah. For I am come as a matter of type of punishment they afflict on you, right. you will take the punishment gladly and do God will. That's right. Huh? For I am come to set a man in well, the against Lord, his father. I, I know this from experience. Amen. Thank God for taking a stand for hallelujah. this truth. I don't have contracts put out on me. Yeah. I don't have, I, we just received threats a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. daring us to come in San Antonio, Texas. We sent ministers down there to baptize, and then some strange group called the hotel and said that them old folk down there with the truth of God, we're going to protest. If they come in San Antonio, Texas, my minister called me. He said, well, what should we do? I said, go. That's right. Lord, that God I don't care if they build a bonfire. That's right. Go, I said. That's right. Lord, that God, I, was, I, was, I wasn't scheduled to go in San Antonio, but I got over the air. After they threw that threat out, it made me feel good. <laughs> And it put a dance in my step and a hallelujah in my mouth. <laughs> I right. said, San Antonio coming down there in January. That's right. And I want to level the whole city. That's right. And do it. Who would take God from God's eternal word? Think not. Hallelujah. Hey. Hey. Think not. Think not. That I am come to send hallelujah. peace on earth. Take God. Don't think I come to send peace. I came not to send peace, I but a sword. I didn't come to play with you. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father. That's against your father? And the daughter against her mother. Wait a minute. When the daughter repent Amen. and go down in the water, yeah. in the name of Jesus Christ, receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Oh, yes. She no longer agree with her mother wearing pants. That's right. No longer agree, amen, with her mother wearing wigs. No longer agree with the makeup kit. That's she don't right. go to the club with her mother no more. Amen. Yeah? Amen. Why? What happened? And the daughter against her mother. He said at variance. For I am come the to daughter here yeah, mm -hmm. against her mother. They at variance now. 
Amen. So then a mother take it as disrespect. I remember when God was molding me and shaping me, thank God, as a young man right. in my teens and was opening up my understanding. Bless God, my mother thought I couldn't stand her <laughs> because everything she was doing, God made me preach against it. Right. God, hey, she, she had a silver fox shawl. And the Holy Ghost had me barking about modest apparel. Right. She had gold all in her mouth. And the Bible moving me to preach against the wearing of gold. Right. She had a wedding band on that her husband, which is my father, gave her. Yeah. Thank God I told her, you keep it. Doesn't matter if daddy gave it to you, to hell you're going. That's right. My mother pulled me to the side and said one day, she said, son, why you hate me? I said, I don't hate you. I love you, but I got to do what God say do. That's right. And if you don't obey the Bible, mama, Mama, yeah. you're going to hell. That's she right. looked, she ran down the hallway of the house and ran to my father's room in his office and said, Ernest, Ernest, did you hear what Nikki said? He said, yeah, I heard him. And if you don't do it, you are going to hell. <laughs> huh? Amen. And go to God, she couldn't get help from neither source. Amen. Everybody got to come back and do this on God's terms. That's right. I don't care how cute you think you are if you think you're God's gift to all humanity. That's right. Brother, if you think you're God's gift to all women of the earth, you got to come back and do it like the Bible said. Right. How much money you got don't make you a man. How many babies you make don't make you a man. It doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, how wealthy the size church organization you have, how large or how long you've been a bishop. Everybody got to come back to this. That's right. Because this is that. That's right. Huh? For I am come to set a man at variance I against his father. I come to set a man at variance against his daddy. And the daughter against her mother. Daughter against the mother. And the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Uh-oh, it, it spilled over to your in-law? That's right. It spilled over to your in-law? And the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. You know, sometimes the in-laws love you before you got saved. Yeah. Amen, amen. Uh, two sinners got married. Her son, her daughter and marrying a sinner's son. The next thing you know, they both repent and go down in water. In the name of Jesus Christ, we see if the Holy Ghost now or the son do it first. Right. And then the wife complained to her wicked old mother, which is his mother-in-law. That's right. And then the mother-in-law called the son. What's the matter with you? What do you mean telling my daughter she can't wear pants? Yeah. What do you mean throwing out her makeup? Mm -hmm. What do you mean uh, all this? Where are you getting all this from? Yeah. And it doesn't matter if the son-in-law be respectful and open the Bible up and show his mother-in-law until God pricked the heart of his mother-in-law, yeah. mother-in-law gonna fight. That's right. Mother-in-law gonna say you're in a cult. That's right. Amen. But let a style come out by a celebrity. Oh, yeah. Let a female celebrity say, I want to wear long dresses. Yeah. You'll find practically every single woman in the world That's true. wearing long dresses. That's right. Let a female uh, celebrity say, I want to wear my hair natural. No more perm. Right. No more hair straightening. No more dying. Yeah. Amen. None of, no, don't put no more henna in my hair yeah. so it'll burn it out. Let her do it. That's right. They say, oh, you know what? I think I go natural. Never mind the Bible that says who's adorning. Let it not be the outward adorning of wearing a gold or putting on the apparel or plaiting of the hair, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, but an ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God a great price. You can tell them what the Bible says. They'll fight that. Right. But when a celebrity said, they all bow to it. That's right. 